and welcome to It's Not All Doom and Gloom episode 8. So the podcast today is going to be hard questions to ask myself. So if you're not new to my podcast, I am the Midnight Raven and of course we have done some hard-hitting questions in the first three videos of this series back when I first started the podcast and today we're going to do some even harder, more deeper questions to get to know me. So there has been a lot of new people to my channel recently and I think that you want to delve into Raven, who she is, the backstory, how I became who I am and learn a bit about me some more. So today we're going to do 10 hard hitting deeper questions um, and these are just to get an insight more into who I am so that we can be more relatable to each other. So this is the It's Not All Doom and Gloom episode 8 and let's get into the first question. What is your biggest risk you ever took? The biggest risk I think I ever took was having my first child. I was 17, I was homeless, um, I, my partner had left me and I had the decision whether or not to keep my child. At that time I was about three months pregnant, um, I was up in arms, I didn't know what to do, I was trying to go to college, I was trying to have a job. I was trying to be a woman that had it all, you know, the job, the life, the partner. And I lost everything. My partner walked out on me. I then had to quit college. I then had to quit my job. And then I had to decide whether to keep a baby or not. And I did. I kept my son. He's called Kieran. He's turned into a very mature 21 year old who this year will turn 21 and is now about to have his first child. And I'm about to become a nanny or a grandma or whatever you call to my first grandchild. So I did take a risk and some people would say, did it pay off for me? And I would say yes. I do look back sometimes throughout my life and I have done over the years of what my life could have been had I not had children. And I think you do reflect on that sometimes thinking that if I hadn't have got pregnant at that point, maybe my life would have taken a different direction. I do think it would have. Would it have been better? I cannot say. That's not a judgment I can make. Um, so moving on to question two. What is the most ridiculous nightmare you've ever had? Ooh, the most ridiculous nightmare. No, I don't have many nightmares. I have had some nightmares. Like I've had a nightmare after childbirth before with my third child. I had nightmares for weeks after that because it was a bit of a traumatic birth um but like proper nightmares that either like worry or scare me they don't happen that often um they do say that nightmares can sometimes be a like a premeditation of things to come like if you imagine a death within a nightmare apparently you're going to lose a loved one around you um, if you imagine the death of yourself, that doesn't necessarily mean the death of yourself, but that could be a death of something within your life, whether it's your job, whether it's a relationship. Death in a nightmare doesn't necessarily have to be bad. Um, I have had nightmares about death and dying and, and stuff like that. I have lost quite a few people recently in my life. And that then does put a worry into yourself that look you're not going to live forever and this could happen to you you could literally walk out of the house today walk down the street have a car come off the pavement you could cross the road and get hit by a bus life is very very fragile um and it does scare some people and some people do have nightmares every night that they're going to die and things that are going to go bad and things are going to happen and that's just a part of life, unfortunately. Okay, question 33. Tell us an embarrassing story. Um, an embarrassing story. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I've collapsed a lot. So I was pregnant with my third child. And we were going around Tesco's just 
doing shopping as you do. And then I just passed out. I hit the floor like a sack of scones. Right in the most coldest place you can imagine, the fish mongers aisle. So you had the, the deli, the meat deli, and the fishmongers. And I collapsed right in front of the fishmongers. And boy, was it cold. I woke up belly conscious. I was having breathing problems. My breathing was all laboured. And I was in possibly the worst place in the supermarket. I could have collapsed apart from the freezer department. Um, I was woken up to tin foil around me. Um, I don't remember if I hit my head at all, but I did go down like boom, apparently. Um, and then there was a crowd of people watching. Um, and I could see flickers of lights above, like the, um, you know, the horrible lights you get in a supermarket. So bright, like waking up and I'm like, bright. I felt sick. I felt dizzy. I, I was not right at all. But I was shopping with my partner at the time, and I was shopping with one of my other children. So they took my eldest son away and took him away so they could get me sorted. They then got an ambulance. Um, I was then put on an oxygen tank because my breathing was laboured. My blush, blood pressure had dropped. Um, I wasn't doing well. I was also pregnant at the time with my third child, so it wasn't going well because if I was breathing and my breathing was laboured, then so was the child inside me because they obviously take the oxygen from you um, and it passes through. So I was struggling and then they then became so concerned of my child. So I was then rushed to hospital with an oxygen tank. My son at the time was taken um, into the store by one of the staff members and he was allowed to pick a drink. They gave him a free thing from the bakery. They gave him a donut. He had a bottle of drink, apparently. They were nothing but nice. Um, we didn't get the shopping in the end, we dipped the shopping, left everything, um, my partner and my son got in the car, I went off in the ambulance by myself, um, and I just remember being more concerned of being watched in the supermarket, and I felt so, like, on show, I don't know about you, but collapsing in a public place, People just gather around and they want to watch and they want to see what's going on. And I, I felt embarrassed. I never actually went shopping there again because I felt so embarrassed to go back to the same supermarket. Um, I always get worried that people look at me and I was just, you know, paranoid. So that's probably the most like embarrassing story I've got. Um, the next question, explain an inside joke you have with a friend or family member. Hmm. See, my family don't really do humour, but I'm always classed as the weird one, the strange one, the more abnormal one, the black sheep. Um, it's always been like my two sisters are like, twinning kind of thing that they hang out they they talk all the time and although I'm their sisters it's like I'm not because I'm not part of their little group I'm not part of everything they do and I'm kind of separate to my own sisters I've kind of gone off done my own thing and wanted my independence but I may have lost that little connection I had when we were younger because I used to hang out with my middle sister more I didn't really hang up with my younger sister due to the six years in, in age difference. Um, so when they was my younger started high school, I'd already left. Um, so there was always an age gap between me and the youngest. And me and my middle sister didn't really get on. I wouldn't say we didn't like each other. We just had different interests. Um, so an inside joke would be that, you know, I'm not you know, part of the sisterhood, if you want to call it. I don't know how you want to put it. Um, and that I was a black sheep, not really a part of them, which is fine by me. I live on my own. I have my own life now. And um, I do speak to them and see them. It's just that we're not like this, like, three triangle sisters, you know, ride or die and all this stuff. 
So next question, if your pet could talk, what do you think they might say about you? Well, I have a cat called Midnight. Um, if you don't know who Midnight is, then where have you been? He's a beautiful black and white cat. And if Midnight was to talk about me, he would tell me that I work too hard, that I'm never at home, which I was never at home. I'd spend less time with my cat and my children than I think I've ever spent less time with anybody. I worked so hard. I was doing 40, 50 hours a week, working in a care home. Um, loved the job, don't get me wrong, but it was really intense. And my son is currently doing the same job that I did in the care home. He's working 40, 50, 60 hour weeks. Um, and my cat would probably tell me that I was working too much, that I needed to chill a bit, um, that I didn't give him enough attention, <laughs> um, that he felt abandoned because I did work so much, and that he's probably owed some some lap time, just to love sitting on my lap. And when I was trying to do my laptop work, he'd try and sit on the laptop and be like, oi, oi, remember me? Um, I was so into my work. So I think I'd get told off by my cat, um, <laughs> if I'm honest. Uh, question 36, tell me your life story in exactly one sentence. <clears throat> a life of struggles, but I carried on. That would be my sentence. A life of struggles, but I carried on. So that's what I would call my life story. It was a tumultuous upbringing from um, having a dad that took drugs was a absolute alcoholic um, who didn't really have time for his family, um, who would spend most of his time playing music, playing records, going to the pub. Um, he did work um, and we didn't see a lot of him until he hurt his back after being hit by a car, not once but twice. Um, because he was biking home drunk, he then couldn't work, um, and then just became what I call a lay around. He'd go to the pubs in the evening, he'd do pretty much nothing the rest of the day. My mum, on the other hand, um, she used to work and then she had kids, and then I think she became a bit complacent with not working. She's now back to work and she has a new partner. My parents did divorce. Um, after my dad had an affair, um, so we had that, and then I spent my entire childhood being bullied through high school, right from the start of high school until I left high school. Um, I had a few boyfriends during high school, none really panned out. Um, there are more darker parts of my childhood that I, I don't wish to talk about, but they did impact on my entire life and still to this day. So yeah, and in a life story in one sentence would be, life was a struggle, but I carried on. Um, next is, what is the strangest coincidence that's ever happened to you? Strange coincidence that's ever happened to you. Now, I've sat here before and wondered whether someone was going to call me today. I've literally sat here and gone, oh, I wonder whether my son will call me today. And within five minutes of me saying that he's then peered up on my phone and is calling me you want to call that a coincidence or a coincidence of um, thinking of a situation that could happen and then not necessarily it happening right there and then but within the week it would happen um it's, it's really weird it's not really coincidences I guess you could call it maybe feeling of deja vu like having an experience and going, well, oh, I'm sure I've already done that. And it's just a coincidence it's happened or it's happening again. Um, but yeah, I think the strangest coincidence is, is like sitting here going, well, I wonder if I'll hear from my son today. And then within five minutes, him calling. Okay, it's not like, do, 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 you know, like UFOs and weird coincidences, but it was kind of a bit eerie. Um, Next question, what is your favourite random fact? 
A favourite random fact? I don't know. I am a purveyor of researching stuff. I constantly research and research and research about serial killers and murders and missing people and I do have a very dark side to me which doesn't come out really unless you count the videos on YouTube or the stuff I talk about to my friends and everything in a more personal setting. Um, but my favourite random fact? I don't know. I don't really, I don't really delve into like facts and figures unless you count serial killer stuff. Um, but random facts, I don't know. I honestly don't know. That's that's a question I can't really answer. But if you have a favourite random fact, link it down below. Let me know what it is. Okay, question thirty nine. What is your useless talent? Useless talent would no, be knowing so much about serial killers that it's unbelievable. Um, knowing literally serial killers right back to like the 1800s. Um, knowing everything about them, the story, the scenario, the background, the history, um, people they murdered and just having a, not a photographic memory of stuff, but like when I learn something, I take it in and then it sticks and it it's up there um as we did the other night on a live stream we were talking about serial killers and i was running things off about ted bundy and ed Gein and btk and all of this and people were like wow you know so much and i do because i have an entire bookcase full of serial killers i watch so many serial killer documentaries police stuff forensics uh pathology i i look at a lot of stuff i even watch a lot of YouTubers that do this kind of content, like Ask the Mortician and other ones. So my useless talent would be having a fascination with serial killers, facts and information. Yes. Um, if you class that as weird, um, or, or useless talent. And question 40. What is the strangest food combination you enjoy? Now, I've seen many strange food combinations over the years. Like people say peanut butter and jelly goes together and this and that goes together. But honestly, I don't really eat strange food. I have a very simple, plain diet of things like pasta, pizza. I have had possibly the weirdest food not the strangest combination before but the weirdest was when I bought a chocolate dessert pizza from Iceland um maybe a year or two ago it was classed as a dessert pizza and it was horrendous pizza and chocolate do not go together the same as people trying to put kiwi on a pizza or strawberry or pineapple there are some things that just do not belong together and pineapple on a pizza is a staple someone tried to put kiwi on a pizza and strawberries and i'm just like just make a fruit salad um <laughs> but the strangest food combination i enjoy i don't think i enjoy strange food my diet is kind of plain pizza pasta jacket potatoes i don't really mix foods i usually have like separate things so unfortunately i can't really answer that question apart from like the chocolate dessert pizza which wow but if you want to comment in the chat your strangest food combination i'd love to hear some of them and i will either thumbs them up or thumbs them down depending on whether i like them and that is the it's all it's not all doom and gloom episode eight i hope you enjoyed these more deeper dark dive into my life next week we are going to do another episode of fun get to know me questions and then we're going to go back to some of your true favorites like the trivia and more people want uh more of the would you rather ones as well and then we're going to go on to something new so if you want to like and subscribe 
to my channel, that would be amazing. If you enjoyed this podcast, as I know it's a bit different to how I would usually do it, I would usually be on the floor, but I have a bad back this week due to work. So if you want to like and subscribe, that would be amazing. This is the It's Not All Doom and Gloom podcast episode 8, and I will see you next Sunday for our next episode. Take care and thanks for watching. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye, guys.